When we moved from the road trek to the Airstream, we knew going from a 21-foot Class B RV to a 30-foot travel trailer, plus the van to tow it, so we're right around 50 feet going down the road, it was going to change our travel style, uh, including where we stay. So we're up in the Traverse City, Michigan area right now, staying with our friends Sandy and Eric. And one of the reasons we're visiting with them is because they have a really big driveway. <laughs> yeah, and that's super handy because... My aunt, uncle, and cousins live here in Traverse City, and we've been so used to taking the road trek and staying in their driveway for years, and that's no longer an option because their driveway is just not long enough to hold the Airstream and the van. So unfortunately, we found ourselves in a little bit of a pickle of where we were gonna stay, and luckily, Sandy and Eric have this gorgeous property uh, just outside of town and offered for us to stay here, and that's worked out really well. And but that's just one of the many considerations that we have to take into now uh, with a little bit change in, yeah, change in rig. Yeah, so big thank you to Sandy and Eric <laughs> for letting us stay here. It's, it's been fantastic and we've really enjoyed spending some time with you and, and using your driveway. <laughs> in addition to changing where we stay, it has changed how we get to where we're going because we now have to think a little bit more about what roads are we going to be on? Are we watching for, you know, low clearance bridges? Are we watching for narrower streets and how are we going to make turns where are we going to get gas yeah. that kind of thing construction zones dirt roads things that we never really needed to worry about i mean a little bit but not not when you're towing a really nice brand new airstream <laughs> so we have used google maps on my phone for years every time we travel anywhere in, in the road trek we just would plug it in on there and we'd use that and, and there's times when i've thought about getting away from the phone because there's a lot going on on the phone besides routing and it's too easy to get distracted by other things popping up on it and you know you want to think about that especially when you're towing and in any kind of large rv you need to be super careful when you are driving these and so i thought about maybe we should get a, a dedicated gps unit and then i found out there are rv specific gps units so i reached out to the folks over at techno rv and if you've seen our other videos we've talked about them because i really appreciate their expertise i know that when they sell a product they've researched it they back it they know that it's going to work right and so i reached out to them and they actually offered to give me a discount on a unit. It's the Garmin RV GPS 890. And, you know, they said, hey, do a review on it and we'll give you a discount. Really appreciate that. But another discount I got was they said, if you're interested and willing, Garmin has refurbished units, which are certified. They're checked out, tested. Everything is done by Garmin to say that they are basically good as new. They're just not fresh from the factory. And I've been really happy with that. I've had no issues with it. It comes with a full warranty and it can save you some money. So that's something to consider as well. I mean, it it looked brand new out of the box. I mean, you, you'd have no idea unless you knew that you, that's what you had purchased. And, and we've said no glitches whatsoever. I mean, it's it's essentially brand new. What we're assuming is somebody probably bought the eight inch version that we have and decided, you know what, maybe we want the 10 inch version. So they sent it back, you know, not even being used at all. So they technically have to sell it as, you know, kind of as like a refurbished the used version, but we don't think it really ever actually was used. <laughs> We, you mentioned the eight inch screen and they actually have one that has a 10 inch screen, which is, you know, I, I think almost too big. You're getting in a mini iPad version yeah. at, at that point. But I do like that the screen is large enough. It's much larger than my phone. Uh, and it's just nice to be able to see it very easily when you're driving down the road. If I need to reach up and do anything for it, it's all touch screen. It's big enough that it's easy enough to manipulate. And so I found that to be really, really handy. What's even more handy and has a really nice feature, I think, is the power unit for it stays, in our case, suction cupped to the window, and there is a magnetic mount on the back of this unit. So it comes off, so you as the navigator can get in there and do things in your lap. You don't have to try to reach across no. the van to get to it. And and definitely as the resident navigator, I mean, Google Maps was always nice because whether it was on his phone or my phone, you could just easily quickly pull it up, zoom in, zoom out, do what you needed to do. Uh, this is super handy too. And being able to like, you know, here, I'm holding it here and I'd hold it in my lap in the car or in the, you know, in the van. And that is really nice because then I can program in whether we need to find, you know, a gas station, a rest area, um, you know, whatever we're looking for down the road and you're not up on the dash trying to push buttons and figure out what you're doing. You're not in the, you're not in anybody's view, view lines of sight lines of that nature. Uh, so I really do like that detachable feature so that I can mess around with it. What I find really handy too, is that you can change the displays, all the different 
I don't know what you call them, modules on the screen. So in addition to all of your mapping, you can have the weather, you can have the direction you're headed, you can have the time to your location, miles to your location, elevation, like, and you can mix and match depending on where you're at, what you need to see. And so I find that really handy. Sometimes as we were going through the mountains in Tennessee, we wanted to see the elevation because you're, you're going up and down, but other times having the compass is really handy. So I like that about it is that you can kind of tailor the features and the display screen to your needs and your liking. When you mentioned weather and there's traffic on it, and one of the things is there is an app that goes on your phone, and if you connect it to your phone, it can use the data from that and pull in that live information, that real-time information, and that's been really nice to have, too. It is an Android-based system, actually, on this Garmin, so if you have an Android phone, it'll feel like home. You will have no problem running this thing. <laughs> if you have an Apple, it's not that complicated. You're not used to the Android <laughs> I system. I, I'm very much an, an Apple person. <laughs> and, and you figured it out with no problem, so it's it's nice and easy to use. So it's that's, a, it's that's a GPS. I mean, it's pretty standard. You can't go wrong with it really. <laughs> Not only can you change what's showing on the screen, but you can also change what you are driving on the GPS, which I really like. So it has an RV mode. So in our case, we were able to put in the size of our van, the size of our Airstream, and it keeps track of that. So it knows height and length and weight. And when it's plotting a route, it keeps that in mind when it's giving you a route to use. But when we detach and we're just running around town in the van, I can flip over to car mode and it ignores all the RV warnings and special routing. And so that's super handy. I like having that feature and it's very easy to change back and forth. And another thing I really like about it is its voice control. And I feel like that's something that I've had issues with with other navigation systems, whether that's in-car navigations or even Siri or you know Google Play or whatever it is. The voice navigation is less than reliable. And I have to say that with this GPS, it understands both of us really well when we're giving it, whether it's navigate to Cracker Barrel or navigate to a specific address. Like, it understands you. I mean, to a point, sometimes it gets a little confused with maybe like your dialect or, you know, if you, if you have an accent, you might have to be a little bit more specific, but it's really good. And I really also like that because you have a tendency to like, just start reaching up and pushing buttons. And I'm like, remember, we're now towing something. Like we don't just have 21 feet of van as a car. You are now towing something behind us. And I get really nervous now that you forget sometimes that because it's so easy to tow uh, that we're doing that. So I'm like, voice controls, voice controls. So those are really great. And, and I think that that's been a really nice handy feature because especially because it's so far up on the dash too. both of us are relatively short people and don't have huge arms to reach up and do that. So I think that that's, that's a nice bonus that comes with it. I, I think that does say something about the combination we bought though, because this van is towing the Airstream so well, even when fully loaded, both the van loaded and the Airstream loaded that, I, yeah, there's times when I kind of forget that I'm <laughs> towing a giant trailer back there. So that's good in a lot of ways, but yeah, I do need to pay, pay attention all the time as everybody should. We've mentioned the size of the screen, and one of the things I like about having more real estate is not only will it have the map on it, but then it will also bring up information for you, warnings for the driver, like there's a sharp curve ahead, there's a steep grade, there's a railroad crossing coming up between your towing, I found has been super handy. And, the, ch and the change in speed limit has also been really nice. Speed limit, and it's not an obnoxious notification, it's just a slight ding, and it reminds you to kind of look at the screen and remi you know get reminded about whatever is that's coming up. Um, if you're approaching an interchange, it'll actually have a section of the screen that changes to a a picture of the interchange so you can see what the lane layout is. Oh, that was super handy. Like when we were coming through Atlanta and I'm trying to remember where else, Chattanooga and some couple places in Ohio, any of the big cities, that was super helpful when you've got, you know, four to eight lanes across and you're not sure where you're supposed to be and which exit. So yeah, I really liked that little pop-up in the corner. And But you still had room for that and your map yeah. overall. So that's been great. And I like having that kind of real estate. If we had to say anything that's, I don't know if it's a negative or just concerns about it, one of them though actually is the size of the screen. You mentioned that when we first got it. I mean, it's like the size of my head, although that's not saying much because I'm pretty little. But for me, the size is great for seeing. And I think that that's really nice from a heads up standpoint. But putting it on the dash, it does take up a lot of real estate and a lot of windshield screen space. And so for me as a passenger, I've now lost a little bit of my vision looking out towards the driver's side because of where I sit in relation to where this is. And, and maybe that's just a height issue for me, but it is something to take in mind and depending on what else you have on your screen, whether, or on your windshield, whether that's, you know, a dash cam mount or a CB radio or anything else that you might have mounted up there. It's just another thing to be considerate of or take into consideration where you're placing it and making sure it's not obstructing your, you know, sight. Yeah. The only other thing I would say if there's a concern is, I mean, these are, are 
little computers now, right? That's what they are. I mean, it has a huge database on it of information. You can do research. You can do all kinds of things. You do a lot of trip planning on it. It'll save information for you. It'll save routes. So that's amazing. They are a little pricey. I mean, this unit, I believe, is running $500 retail, which that's a pretty good investment for a lot of people. So it's one of those things you have to look at and say, is it worth it? You know, because is it going to help replace other things that you're doing and maybe multiple things that you're using? Is it going to provide you a little more peace of mind because it's going to help alert you to things that are ahead on the road? It's going to help you alert you if there's low bridges that you have to be concerned about on a route. So that, you know, that's something to think about. For me, I think it was worth it. Granted, we got a discount, but I think even if we had been able to land that discount, I probably would have sprung for it because I, I think we needed it. And I think using yeah. it now, I've, I've proven that. I think one thing people may not think about is with so many of the newer vehicles, you're going to have a big screen built into your dash already in any you know, of the new big trucks. Now, because of the commercial van that we purchased, we didn't have that. So we didn't even have the option to even have a big built-in screen. But those built-in screens don't come with the RV version. And that's specifically what this one's designed for is those low clearance and places where you may not, you're not going to want to take an RV for whatever reason, even toll roads or different things of that nature. So yeah, it's pricey. I think it is well worth the cost and the things that we have already encountered. And I'm sure we are just beginning our travels with the Airstream and there, I'm sure we're going to find many other places along the way where having the RV specific functions are going to come in handy. So, um, you know, maybe at some point we'll have to update on that depending on what is the craziest thing. I mean, I'd be curious to know from you guys, like what's the, if you have, have an RV uh, GPS, or if you don't, what's the craziest place your GPS has taken to you to with your RV that you maybe shouldn't have gone down, and and why having one of these units, you know, probably is a benefit. The other thing I would say is, you know, we've talked about Google Maps, we've talked about various GPS units, you got your in-car units if you have some of the newer newer cars that have the big screens. I would still say trust but verify when it comes to electronic mapping. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's going to take you on a weird route. Not that it's a bad route, but it might take you a little further out of your way than you would have normally gone. Now, in the RV GPS version, maybe there's a reason for that and you shouldn't, you know, second guess it. But we almost always look ahead on the route. Uh, sometimes we'll look ahead using Google Maps. I think... Google Maps is a little better job in terms of construction that's popped up or, you know, last minute traffic jams that are happening. It's a yeah. little faster on Google Maps than it is on this, but this will pick up live traffic over time. So it's helpful to have that. But and you're not a big fan of trusting. No, I, I don't trust electronics in general. I mean, I'm very much a paper maps person. I mean, I will give credit to the, you know, the new systems. I love technology in that sense. What I love is about Google Maps that this one doesn't necessarily have is the actual satellite image so that I can look ahead and see, okay, what does this gas station layout actually look like? Where are we going to need to pull in to get to our pump and to get out? So that's what I rely on Google Maps for any satellite version. I don't believe this has a satellite version, not that we've really dug into. So that would be the one con, but but that's why you have a passenger off, you know, if you have a passenger where you're using your big unit for your directions and then your passengers on their phone looking ahead to verify all of that information or getting out your paper county map or atlas or national forest service road map just to verify where is the GPS taking you because you just never know. Again, what are the crazy situations that people have found themselves in? I know in the UP of Michigan, you can easily find yourself down a two track uh, without even and a dead end before you even know it. <laughs> well, and that's kind of do with Garmin. We've had Google Maps and yeah. we had the road track. It, you know, said turn left and we stopped and looked and we're like, uh, no. I'm driving a, a van. I'm not driving a side by side. I'm not taking that that quote unquote road, road. In, the, in, the, in the upper peninsula of Michigan. That can happen. And I'm sure it can in other places across the country. But wherever you're at across the country and as you get your travels, get a GPS unit, get a paper map, plan a route, get out there, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.